I'm actually a, a newer user to Raycast, and so I've been really delighted to like continue to figure out how to use it. I watched all the What's in My Raycast videos. It was like a great opportunity to be like, oh, you could do that with Raycast. So I was like, okay, let me try this other new thing I hadn't thought of. The first question I was going to ask you was, what's your favorite thing about Raycast? Like, what's the thing that made you actually download it and use it? I was uh, doing a talk about window management and command line optimization, shortcut optimization for developers. I knew that there were some really great tools out there like Raycast and Alfred, and I really wanted to dig into them for the talk. And so I uh, started digging into Raycast and I just fell in love with it. And since that talk, I can't stop using it. I can't imagine my life without it. One of the things that really got me super interested in Raycast is the snippets. Um, as a developer, there are so many things we have to type over and over and over again, like um, console log. Like I could probably make this even a bit shorter and do slash con, but this is the snippet I have because I have to type this tons of times. So another thing that I have to do frequently is I have to write uh, components like in say Vue.js, it's a programming language for front end and you just have to write over and over again. And so if I just do slash view, it just gives me like a template for it. I'm a full stack developer. I work front end, so console log would be with JavaScript and Vue front end and back end PHP Laravel frequently for me. Having to type the like dollar sign frequently, it just it just takes like some extra work and flash D, which is my keystroke for that, it's just a little bit quicker. It just makes my life a little easier. I have a slash A for arrow functions, emojis that are fun to quick react with, like a shrug. You know, it's just things that I might type in Slack frequently or in response to what someone says. It's everything you just showed is so nice because you're using snippets for quite a few different things. When you expand console log, like in your mm -hmm. case, you see how the cursor is at the end of the word, right? It's mm -hmm. just there after the closing bracket. Did you know that when you create a snippet, there are some special placeholders that you can use to reposition the cursor once the text has been expanded? I didn't know, but I'm very delighted to hear that. So it could just be in the middle of the uh, paragraph like the Exactly. Do you want me to show you how to do it real quick? Yes, I would love to see that. Open up Raycast. Ooh. You can do it. We can just, you can just do it. We'll do it and together. Search... That's exciting. Yeah, okay, yeah. Let's so... do it. Let's do it. We're here now. And you go for search snippets. Oops, wrong one. Let me go to the other one. That one. And then right there, you can do Command E to edit. And then if you go to your snippet text field, and you see that little plus button right in the bottom right? Yes. So that's where you add placeholders. And these are all the things that you can do. Some of them are more dynamic than others. So in this case, the one that we would be looking for is cursor position as you're already there. Mm -hmm. Then if you click on that, then you see it adds that placeholder. You can just cut that and paste it wherever you want the cursor to be repositioned to. So that's, that's it. Now you can just uh, do Command Enter to save that snippet. And when you ex next time you expand that snippet, then the cursor will be right there in the middle. Let's see how that looks. Uh, there you go. That's, that's delightful. Cool, right? I feel like there are just so many things that you typically go to on browsers that you know, you can just open a browser and type it in over and over again. And most browsers will give you some help, they'll autocomplete, you know, you can do bookmarks, you can even find ways to make these faster. But it's really nice to just have some of these saved. Um, for example, like one of my favorite ones is uh, the YouTube one. And I really love like doing that query, you know, maybe you want to learn some Raycast tips and it's just so fast. It's so much faster than opening that browser window. And then I also really like saving uh, quick links for things that you have to just get out frequently. So I apply for a lot of talks at conferences. And when you apply for talks, you usually get, you know, similar uh, Google Forms that you have to fill out with your, your social media links, maybe links to some videos. So I can, you know, just save like my 
uh, videos, you know, a talk that I've done before. I can save, you know, links to my social media, you know, just things that I'm going to have to put into these forms over and over again. I feel like this would be so powerful for job hunting whenever you have to fill out those job applications over and over again online, those things that you're using over and over again. Um, and I didn't really go over it in snippets, but um, I've just started adding like email templates. I'm very excited to use those more and maybe like combining email templates with quick links so that you can just quickly respond, you know, no, I'm not interested or thanks for reaching out or, you know, some of those quick things. The way that you're using quick links is really cool because you're using it as a way to quickly open a link. That's why they're called quick link, right? Like the example that you just gave with opening YouTube with a query so you don't have to open the browser go to youtube focus on the search bar because it's not focused by default and then search you just skip all of that right yeah and i usually try to have uh like things like my website or my twitter or my linkedin be both a quick link and a snippet so it's a oh. snippet if i want to quickly put it into like a google form or it's a quick link if i want to go to that really fast and it's oh, nice to yeah. use both i'm a big fan of vim i use it regularly in the terminal but sometimes it's hard to remember how to do that one thing, you know, like maybe you've done it before, but it's been a while. Like, uh, you know, if you want to get to the end of the line, line, you know, or replace, it's so nice to just find some of those key, uh, you know, keyboard shortcuts for Vim. I also use Tailwind a lot. Being able to like search the colors, um, it's really nice, you know, maybe I'm looking for a specific type of purple and it's just right there. I think every item in view right now is a favorite. Yes. So why is that? Well, how do you think about, why did you decide to do this? It's a good question. Um, I feel like uh, the search is really great and, you know, obviously the more you search for things, the more it shows up. But there's like a couple that I just want almost every time and Having them like right there and being able to do command and do, you know, one, two, three, four, you know, just get some of those like quickest ones. I'm going to probably update this as I use this more. I see that the number one favorite though is the clipboard history. You mentioned that quick links and snippets are the two things you use the most. So is it fair to say that clipboard history would be the third? Yeah, and it might be the first. I'm, I feel like a... <laughs> I didn't mention it as much because there's less visual to show with it. I mean, we can look at my clipboard history, but it's pretty boring. But it's one of those things where it's such a quality of life improvement. It's one of the things that got me on board. Like I would say those three are like my top things that got me on board with Greycast yeah. immediately. Because I feel like we've all had this experience where maybe you're filling something out and you need like to save like two or three things. And then you're just like, okay, I'll save this and I'll put it on my Slack or I'll save it and I'll put it on a note. And then I'll, you know, take the one I need and then go get the other one. It's such a like weird juggling of like a thing that doesn't have to be a problem. And I feel like Braincast was so smart and they were just like, how about we just give you, you know, a ton of history and you can just pull these things later. and. Like yeah. that just makes that situation so much better. It's a journey, man. Like that's that's the way, right? You slowly figure out how you want to use it. One last thing I want to mention, talking about AI, is this something that's part of your workflow? Do you use Raycast AI? I haven't used a ton of AI into my workflow yet. Right now I'm on the free plan for Raycast and I'm just so delighted by how wonderful it is even on the free plan. There's so much that you can use. I'm a bit more of like an early career dev, like in the first, you know, four years of my work. And I, really enjoy things that optimize my work but trying to not overwhelm myself with things that i don't fully understand or especially something like github copilot where it could give me code that looks really good and right but i might not have enough experience to notice where it's really leading me astray and so that's something that i want to pull into my workflow as i get more experience because i feel like you know Grammarly, for example, is such a fantastic tool for just, you know, fixing your mistakes and like giving suggestions, but sometimes it's wrong. And as a native English speaker, it's pretty obvious to me when it's offering me something wrong. 
but I don't feel like a native developer yet. You know, I don't feel like that level. Grammarly is really fantastic for people who aren't native English speakers to give them help and suggestions and make their life easier. But also maybe it probably takes a certain level of experience with let's say English if you're using Grammarly for that to feel comfortable using it. And so I'm, yeah. I'm getting there with AI. That's, I absolutely love that explanation. That's such a good comparison. The way that you're thinking about it and being self-aware of how AI may impact the way you learn. That's a really cool way to think about it. And I think that's super mature as well, because, you know, most people are probably leaning towards the other direction. The reason I ask is because if you wanted to try Raycast AI, not for coding, but I don't know, for other things, um, let me know and I can give you access to the pro plan and then you can let me know what you think. I would be delighted to use it, particularly for, you know, just coming up with uh, responses to things or helping with like writing a blog or, you know, both I saw that um, maybe you or some of the other people in West and my Raycast use that uh, Raycast AI in really cool ways and I would love to try those out. Prisa, thanks so much for coming on and showing us how you use Raycast and um, I'll hit you up after this about the Raycast Pro. That sounds great. It was wonderful talking with you.